Um, you know, I think you can argue matchups, uh, you know, tell you're blue in the face, and you can um, talk about different opportunities. But bottom line is um, we're playing in March. We're playing at home. Uh, we have championship aspirations, and so you have to be playing your best basketball, and you got to take one game at a time, period. And so I'm excited for that. I'm excited for uh, Southern California to have two women's basketball programs hosting. I mean, women's basketball is taking over Southern California right now. I hope uh, we, we sell out Poly Pavilion, and I hope um, that other school down the road does really well too. And I really think that this is about bigger than just our, um, just our individual programs. It's about growing the game. And so really excited for what's gonna happen with that. We've got um, three really good teams coming into Poly Pavilion for the first and second rounds. And so uh, we've definitely got our work cut out for us. We're gonna have, be, have to be playing very well right off the bat. There are no um, you know, coasting through anything. I happened to catch some of Cal Baptist's championship game on TV, and um, they're really well coached, great team. Um, and so we're going to have to be good right off the bat. So, but what a great time, and, and really going to actually need your guys' help as media to really create, help us create the buzz uh, for women's basketball. And our players deserve that, and we, we want a packed house uh, for us to play these first couple rounds in. Uh, you kind of alluded to this in what you just said, but uh, were you holding out hope for number one seed? And how do you feel about Albany versus uh, Portland Regional? Well, you know, I sort of think it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter uh, where we're going. I sort of had um, gotten myself to think we probably would end up a number two seed. Um, you know, the reality is, is that every experience has opportunities. Uh, every experience has learning moments. And, um, you know, we had plenty of opportunities um, to become, a, to earn a number one seed. And we didn't. So what has that taught us? And will we be better moving forward? And so my, my job is to get us to be really good in the path that we have. And so, you know, I, I sort of thought it would be that way. Of course, we would love to be in Portland. Um, you know, from a fan's perspective and our families and parents and those kinds of things. But you know what I want even more than being in Portland? I want to be in Cleveland. And so um, if it takes going through, um, you know, Albany and, of course, going one game at a time, um, you know, that's our, our ultimate standard. And so we're trying to play to that level. Um, the path this season was kind of like tumultuous at times, just with injuries and like players being out for Olympic qualification obligations. Yeah. Um, so just, I mean, you didn't get the number one seed, which would have been awesome. But looking back on things, just how gratifying is it to get that two seed? Yeah. You know, I think the bottom line is, um, we, I think we would have, of course, loved to have been a number one seed, but, you know, um, being a number two seed is, I think, one of the highest in program history, you know, and so is it the highest or it's the high, we have the highest seed in program history. So just wrap your mind around that and still a very, you know, young team in a lot of ways. And so um, I, I feel thrilled that, number one, we get to play in Poly for the first, uh, you know, rounds and hopefully a chance to earn more. Um, but, you know, I, I really want to celebrate our growth, but I, I keep going back to this because I'm just so laser focused on it, is that what does it look like for us to play our best basketball this next night? And the rest can take care of itself. But I am really proud of them for what they've earned, just given what you mentioned, all of the obstacles that we had and the interruptions and those kinds of things. Uh, it's great to be in this position. Um, for coach or players, like two years ago in the WNIT, you had to travel to Wyoming, South Dakota, last year, South Carolina, Oregon State. this year. I mean, yeah. Corvallis, that same one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. And then this year, last year, South Carolina, this year, um, New York on the East Coast again. You had a pretty um, travel-heavy non-conference. How did that prepare you, do you think, for um, this year, I, whoever? Yeah, I think that prepared us very well. I mean, in the preseason, I think we did four cross-country uh, like flights, and I think we just know um, how to play in those environments, how to play um, on you know a different uh, time frame, and I think we're really just we're ready to go um, travel. And we're going to have to do that a lot next year, so it's just an opportunity to prepare, prepare for that. Anything else, Riz? She said it. 
No. I think the bottom line is we have earned a lot of confidence in that and playing away from home. We had the number one uh, most difficult non-conference schedule in the country. Uh, we had more top 25 wins going into postseason play than anybody else and did a lot of those on the road. And so, you know, you can't make those things up. You earn that kind of confidence and we're going to take that with us for sure. Uh, for Coach, you, you said before the USC Pac-12 tournament game that it was like an Elite Eight, Sweet 16 level game. And, you know, barring any upsets, you could potentially face, you know, LSU and Iowa and your side of the bracket. How well do you think those USC games and playing, you know, the teams that there are in the Pac-12 prepares you for those types of games? Incredibly well. I think there's the... There's elite coaches that force you to make adjustments and to um, play different styles of play. There are great, talented players that play the game differently from, uh, you know, Utah that's very fluid and spreads you out, um, you know, to, you know, Arizona, to Colorado, to, you know, all the different teams in Stanford. They all have really varied styles of play, but all at a really high um, level nationally. And so it forces you to, to learn to adjust and pivot and, and be ready for multiple things. And so, uh, you know, at the same time, also not making it about everybody else, but learning how w against different styles, how you still play to your own identity. And, you know, I think that's really important in the NCAA tournament is knowing who are the Bruins and when are we at our best and how do we play to that consistently? So, but definitely, I think all of us coaches that have been in the Pac-12 have said over and over again, we feel so prepared going into NCAA tournament time because of having to play each other night in and night out. Would you say this is your deepest and best team and is it capable of a breakthrough, the breakthrough you've been looking for? Uh, it is our deepest um, team for sure. Um, the varied ways in which, and I would say most versatile in some ways too, the most varied ways we've won games and continue to win games. Um, I definitely believe that we can make a deep run. Um, as long as we're focused on the correct things, I think we have to be the aggressors. That's been something we've really been dealing with this week is, um, you know, really punching first and punching often and not, that, not having that be a cliche, but truly how we play. That every 50-50, Every, you know, block cut, every, every physical play, you have to know what kind of battle you're entering into, and we need to be the aggressors. And, um, and I think the, the second thing that's really big for us is, um, is knowing, you know, how to make somebody else better, and then special situations. Those have been the big things for us, is uh, what is our identity, punching first, and all those um, game time, special situations, uh, si uh, you know, opportunities for us. We've been really putting a lot of emphasis on that, so we're ready for any given moment. Charisma, I feel like we've talked about you coming back for another year, like, so many times at this <laughs> point. Um, but now that, you know, we're looking at your last shot at a national title, what do you want to show people about yourself in this time? Honestly, it's not really about me. I think I'm just focused on the team and what we can do to get to the national championship game. So I'm not really focused on, like, specifically me, but just trying to lead my team. I guess my leadership, if anything, I want people to see that um, I lead the team really well and along with other people. Uh, for the players, what makes you think that you're capable of a, of a deep run and a breakthrough uh, this, this, in this tournament? I would say the resume and the games um, that we played throughout this entire season have prepared us uh, really well for uh, you know these next few weeks. I think playing in the Pac-12, playing the really great non-conference schedule that we played, and just having the experience under our belt, um, we're confident going into this month that um, you know we can execute and we can compete and beat all the other top teams in the country. And along with that, I think we've had a great week of practice, and I think feeling good and feeling good about our preparation is going to be really important. And uh, you know we're going to put together another great week and we're going to be ready to play our first two games. Yeah, and we have great coaches. Our scouting reports are elite, and I think as long as we execute them and really lock into the film and what we have to do, then there's no doubt we can't make a, a long run in the tournament. And just going back to, you know, deep runs and everything, I think there's such an amazing you can feel there's like a, a moment in women in sport happening right now. And I feel like there's this moment in this NCAA tournament run. I feel like there's this moment in Southern California right now. And, uh, you know, I don't want people to miss it. This is like a really special. Lots of people were wearing these shirts. Everybody watches women's sports. Um, some people are predicting that the ratings are going to be better for the first time in history uh, in the women's side of uh, the NCAA tournament than the men's. And we're not, we don't want to take anything away from the men's. This is not about taking something away. 
Like we, I love the men's basketball March Madness tournament, but this is about lifting up a new level of women's basketball. And there's a lot of eyeballs on it. And, you know, I was, uh, even one of our own, Matt Barnes was talking on his podcast about how I, he says, I honestly can tell you that I know more women's basketball players playing in the NCAA tournament than I know men's. And, you know, I just think we're at a different time and place. And I just, I hope um, people really get behind this. And, you know, the reality, you know, I wish every, uh, you know, uh, team, I wish our men were in the NCAA tournament right now. I wish we were doing this together. But the reality is right now, we are the only Bruin basketball team playing right now. And so I hope every uh, basketball fan comes out and supports our team and comes out and does this. It really is a special moment. And we need to get behind these women. You guys had the watch party over at Mo Austin, which I think is the first time you've had a event with the mm -hmm. um, men of Westwood Westwood Collective. So just tell me, like, girls, tell me what it means to just, you know, have that kind of event and just what the scene was kind of like over there. Yeah, it was super fun. We had, um, you know, a lot of people involved in the program that have been supporters of us um, for such a long time. And I think it was just really great to all be able to come together um, through Champion of Westwood and to um, just celebrate all the accomplishments this season. I was having a great time at the bracelet making station. <laughs> yes. um, but yeah, it was so fun to just being a just being able to interact with other people and people who have been supporting us this whole time and just having them watch it with us. Um, I think we had a great time. And we, I want to thank the, our donors. Um, they, they've been amazingly supportive, but also um, some of them really stepped up to sponsor kids from the YMCA to come and experience that with us. And so, you know, it's it really has to be something deeper and, and really giving back to somebody else. And we had all these different poster making things and TikToks and all kinds of different things that we got to experience, but specifically to be able to maybe inspire just one other little kid. And that wouldn't have happened without the generosity of our donors and the partnership with YMCA. What did the bracelet say? Uh, the one, Cam made this pink one for me, and uh, it says Miss Rice. <laughs> <laughs> this one has a bunch of hearts and smiley faces, and it says love, and Lena made it for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, Men of Westwood has been pretty visible this season with giveaways and everything. What strides that we talked about at the beginning of the season, Champion of Westwood as the offshoot, what strides have you seen since we've talked then um, that they've made for you all. Well, I really want to thank them for their hard work. Um, so many, you know, people have given so much of their time, and Ken Grayer um, specifically, and uh, the Men of Westwood is obviously the umbrella organization of that particular collective, but the Champion of Westwood is the women's arm of that. And, you know, I just think we're um, we're just scratching the surface of uh, the amazing potential that we have in that. Um, it is a part of our reality in college athletics. You know, it's like you can argue about it, you can like it, not like it, it really doesn't matter. What we've been asked to do here at UCLA is to lead with championship level standards, to lead our women to have the best total collegiate experience they possibly can with the resources that we have here. And, and the reality is NIL is a part of those resources. We're in the number one media market in the world here in Los Angeles. We have opportunities and networking. Some of the people that were even just over at our event, we had an art show that was hosted hosted um, by one of our donors yesterday for Izzy and uh, Emily's uh, art that they had put together. And, and, you know, the people that we get to meet here, uh, NIL is just, it's a part of, it's a part of our landscape now. And so we want to use it. We always say that we want every young woman in our program to have an uncommon transformational experience. We want them to be taught to have, te we want to teach, mentor, and equip our young women for life beyond UCLA long after the ball goes flat. And so I'm trying to spin NIL. We don't believe in pay for play here. We don't believe in just buying teams or buying players. But I do believe in teach, mentor, and equip. So if that's investing, if that's learning about taxes, if that's learning about retirement, if that's trying to see further in the future, I've been able to have more financially equipping conversations with young women that I've ever had in my career. And so instead of um, complaining about NIL, I'm trying to leverage it. I'm trying to use it as an arm of our philosophy to teach, mentor, and equip. Corey, I know you mentioned you watch Cal Baptist play a little bit, but I know you're a pretty connected woman, so do you have any connections with coaching staff or anybody over at Cal Baptist? 
I don't actually, you know, it's, I, I know, I know him, um, the coach there, and I, I know a little bit about them. I've spoken on a couple of panels on, uh, international recruiting with him. Uh, he's really good. He's been good consistently. They have been good consistently, but, uh, I don't have a real strong connection there. So, but the reality is now every game I will, right after this, I'm going to go to our scouting staff meetings and we will have so more film than we know what to do with almost instantaneously. Um, but I will tell you, they have my respect. Respect, and uh, we will not overlook anything. They are a really good basketball team, and we are going to be focused on playing towards our identity first and whatever it takes um, for this particular game to earn another one. And so all I'm thinking about right now is learning whatever I can to develop a plan. We will, we're going into final exam, so, and this is our heaviest final exam day tomorrow as a team. So we are going to spend the whole day scouting as a staff, and we won't practice tomorrow. And then we'll get back together on Tuesday when we're really prepared to make that next step. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't know them. I don't have any fun stories or connections with him, um, but I do uh, have a ton of respect. And so uh, I'm excited. I think our whole, you know, UNLV is really good. Um, you know, Creighton's really good. We had them here when we hosted um, several years ago, and he just does, Jim does such a great job there. So we're going to have our work cut out for us just right here in L.A. And that's one of the challenges, too, in terms of marketing. Um, you know, I think sometimes people may not know how good Creighton really is. They may not know how good UNLV really is or Cal Baptist. And sometimes the name people get uh, all excited about name recognition. Um, but we may have one of the div most difficult and complete uh, first and second rounds. And so just really excited to be able to compete with that. But LA, take notice. You're going to want to come out and see this.